Okay, sweet. There we go. Oh, we have transcriptions. Very cool. I wonder how badly it's going to butcher our broken English. I think it's working pretty well right now. Give it a read. Oh, yeah. No, it, it works pretty well. Just waiting for a few more. Yep, yeah, we're just we're hanging gonna, out. We're, we're going to do uh, three or five. You guys want transcriptions then or no? Um, we probably don't need transcriptions. Probably don't need transcriptions. It's going to be easier to see uh, what's going on in the chat if there's not transcriptions. Do we have any problems with echoing? You're not hearing any echo problems? Even when. Like, say, Vinny and I are really close to each other. All right, fantastic. Yeah, transcription is off, but there's some just to be safe. Ian, go ahead real quick. Okay, sure. Um, I'm talking right now, and there's no echoing. Or transcriptions. Yay. Or echo. And then on there, it's like, Yeah. All right. T minus two minutes. We'll be starting to do some introductions, and then we'll introduce you guys to the first drop, which is what I know you're waiting for. Um. Yeah. Small tag to the left. Okay. All right, one thing we should mention before we start here is that by joining this live stream, you're consenting to being recorded if your camera or your microphone is on. This will be recorded and put up later on probably our Instagram, our YouTube, wherever else you can find Campus Track and Outdoor Pursuits. Okay. And we're looking at maybe a 10 pound discrepancy in the data that is shown in the data that we're going to be collecting. So um, anything that you see on the screen, add 10 pounds to it. Obviously right now it's like negative six, negative 10. So that makes sense. A little bit. And that makes sense because the scale is hanging from its own weight, which is about two to three pounds. All right, everyone, go ahead and put a guess right now in the comments below what you think the maximum force on our scale is going to see in this first drop. Um, otherwise, it's 3.05. Let's get started. So, uh, come on closer to the camera. Yeah, for sure. All right. Welcome, everyone, to Outdoor Pursuits Rock Wall Science. My name is Vinny. And I'm Ian. And today, we're going to be dropping everything. So, some uh, learning objectives and some goals for today is, first of all, we're going to be applying some scientific method to the tests that we're doing here on the wall. And these are just the snapshots of the amount of tests and science we do here at Outdoor Pursuits. So if you're interested in more stuff like this, Outdoor Pursuits has student employment opportunities and trip opportunities and anything that you can think of that involves rocks, walls, ropes, or anything related. Um, where are your people for that? The other learning objective is to demonstrate some of the safety of modern hardware. So even though we're expecting forces here that exceed hundreds of pounds, what we're not going to be doing today is breaking anything. 
Um, all the gear that we're using in each of our systems is rated to many thousands of pounds, and we're not going to see forces anywhere like that today, even though we're going to be see forces that are slightly outside of a typical climbing use, especially in a top roping setting. Um, and our last learning objective, you remember what that was? That's right, to demonstrate how to apply the scientific process. So obviously everything we do here is going to be uh, extremely uh, oriented towards the scientific process. We're going to do everything objectively and uh, make sure that we're uh, recording everything and uh, applying everything into what we uh, have recorded. So in each of our drops, we're going to uh, explain uh, how everything works and uh, obviously how it's, oh my God. I, I'm, I'm sorry, can you take over for this? Yeah, as an engineering student, I uh, have taken up through major general physics too, and I'll be breaking down some of the stuff that we see um, during these drops. So obviously we're dealing with forces, tensions in ropes, and even mechanical advantage in a pulley system. So I'll be breaking that down for you guys. If anyone has questions, please do drop them in the comments. Speaking of dropping stuff. I think it's about time to drop everything. It's about time? All right. So here you see on the wall our first drop. This is to demonstrate uh, an uncontrolled load on a rope without any belay device, without any system to catch it. Um, and we have rigged this 45-pound plate up on the climbing wall using a system uh, with a Volvatane truss. Um, when we pull this accessory cord right here, you're going to see the rope drop and uh, hit uh, just below the ground. So uh, this will demonstrate the impact of a falling and a catching force by the rope. All right, are we about ready? Yeah. Drum okay. roll, please. Let's drop everything. All right, go ahead and pull it. Woo, Woo! That was a pretty good fall. Sweet. All right. All righty. What did we see? Oh no! Did it stop recording? Okay, I think it's um. I think you might have to download that. Let's see what the. Let's see what it saw. That doesn't look right. What's the enforcer reading? Yeah. What is it? Enforcer is not. Did, did we, we set it to max, max load? load? I'm sure it's set it to max load. Yeah. Okay, it says zero. Oh no! I think we may not have set it to max load. That's okay. We can go ahead and explain. explain. That's right. Kind of what happened here. So, um, as you can imagine, uh, that number is not right because a 45-pound plate hanging from a rope is going to be 45 pounds, and a 45-pound weight falling onto a rope is going to be a lot more than that. So, um, in prior tests, we've seen. Uh, forces in the 300 pound range from a drop like this so a lot more than is shown on the reading um, and that's just because sometimes this thing has connectivity issues so um one of the things that i wanted to demonstrate with this fall is that you see how the graph there has those big spikes in its force reading that's because that weight is going to fall on it it's going to bounce back a little bit and keep loading it in a little bit of a wave pattern. So um, one of the fundamental principles of physics here is the impulse momentum theorem. So the impulse momentum theorem says that an object's change in velocity, uh, sorry, not its velocity, change in momentum, which is its mass times its velocity, an object's change in momentum is equal to a force applied to it times the amount of time that we applied that force for. So if this right here is a, uh, oh, there we go. It read it in kilonewtons. So what's 2.4 kilonewtons? Oh, I, I, my kilonewtons to uh, pounds is not something I know off the top of my head. For us Americans, right? So the impulse momentum theorem says that an object's change in momentum is equal to the force that it experienced times the time that it was experienced for. And if we look at our graph right here, um, we have a force axis and a time axis. And if we multiply those two axes together, we get force times time, 
which we know is equal to the change in momentum. So an interesting calculus concept here is that the area underneath that first spike of the curve that we see on the screen right now is equal to its mass times its change in velocity. So we know the mass stayed constant, only the velocity changed. And so if we took the area underneath that first spike and divided it by the weight of the thing, then we know how fast it was going when the rope started to catch it. Um, in addition to that, uh, the impulse momentum theory also tells us that the longer it takes to catch something like this, the less force it will experience. So if you have a rope that snaps and immediately catches that thing and doesn't let it stretch at all, if that rope just if that load comes down and stops on the rope just like that, it's going to be a really really hard catch, and it's going to experience a lot of force to change the same amount of momentum versus a stretchy rope like the ones we use for outdoor lead climbing. Those ropes have a stretch factor that you can feel when you tug on it. So when we load one of these ropes, it experiences the same amount of change in momentum because it's still a moving object, but it experiences that force over a greater period of time and thus experiences less force during that time. All right. Are we ready cool. to rig that next drop? Let's do it. All righty. Cool. Um, I'll need to go up with right. the green. So we can go ahead and uh, Okay, great. So while Vinny is rigging this uh, this next system, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about our program here at Outdoor Pursuits. This is one of the coolest uh, programs on campus. Uh, we do a massive amount of outdoor activities, um, both inside at our climbing wall, obviously, um, outside on campus through our uh, cityscape hikes, which go all around Denver. Uh, we can see, we're, like for example, um, tomorrow we're going to the Botanical Gardens um, to check that out. That's gonna be a very cool trip. Um, and then we also do a lot of off-campus outside activities. Our main, um, outdoor series is our rock uh, series where we um, take people outside, teach them the basics of anchor building, the um, basics of climbing, and uh, go out and, and you can climb on crags, um, which is such a cool experience. Uh, we do a lot of rappelling clinics as well, which is very cool if you've never rappelled. That's something that I would recommend to every person. Um, it, it's very cool. We do it in a very controlled environment uh, with a lot of safety features so that you're perfectly 100% safe, even though you may not feel like it in the moment. <laughs> it's just a great uh, great opportunity to get out there. Um, we do a ton of stuff on our climbing wall. Obviously, our rock wall science uh, is, is a great um, opportunity that we have. We also have um, anchor building clinics on the climbing wall. We do lead climbing clinics on the climbing wall. If you're interested in that, we're going to do a test in a little bit um, to show uh, how the forces of a lead fall work, uh, which is very cool. Um, there's a ton of different opportunities on the climbing wall. If you just want to come out and climb, um, this is here. Uh, when the fitness center is open, that's 7 to 7, uh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And, uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, we do a lot of uh, drop-in uh, belay clinics as well. So if you wanted to learn how to belay, uh, some basic rope skills, we're always happy to teach you. Our office is down um, in the P building, um, in the basement, with this big mural of, uh, of the person repelling. And uh, you can go down to the basement, and we'll, we're there tended to weekdays. So you can uh, check us out down there. Um, yeah, so right now, uh, Vinny is rigging uh, another system to bring that rope up on the wall. We haul the rope up using a uh, three to one Z drag system. So basically what that is, is we have a, the weight attached to a um, pulley at the top, which uh, is a prussic minding pulley. Uh, I'll explain that in a second. Um, where, so you, you goes to the pulley at the top and down to another pulley, which goes back into the pulley at the top and then down into the low strand. So the pulley system um, gives a three to one mechanical advantage uh, so when you're hauling up 45 pounds, 
uh, it may look like, you know, you're hauling, it, it doesn't feel like 45 pounds, right? It, it feels like a third of that weight. Um, so if it's uh, right now, this Z drag is set up as uh, the weight holds the uh, pulley, which holds um, the pulley up there. And then we also have uh, a, an auto block in that, which is, uh, it's called a prussic. So what that does is it wraps around the rope um, and stops it from moving one direction. So it will slide when the rope is moved one direction, but it will stop in the other direction. So when you pull it up, um, it actually holds the system in place and doesn't allow it to move. Um, so you can let go of your strand and it will save your progress there. But if you wanted to lower it, uh, we have another line in there called a tag line or that is looped through the Prusik uh, to allow it to disengage whenever we want to lower weight on the rope. We can show you that in just a second as we haul this up. Vinny right now is climbing up to the wall to re-rig our second drop. Um, he is getting belayed there by Mackenzie. Hello, Mackenzie. And uh, we're just, um, yeah, so Vinny is coming up here and he's going to rig on our two anchors there. This is going to simulate a drop from a, uh, an uncontrolled fall from a top rope. So this is your most common form of climbing. Uh, top rope climbing is what most people do in the gym. Uh, it's accessible to do outside. And um, it's, it's one of the, the most uh, common forms of climbing. Um, there's a lot of different systems you can use to belay successfully on top rope. And this next test will show you what happens if that belay fails. So we're going to do a couple different tests on a couple different belay devices to see how they interact. The first one is an ATC, which I actually don't have on me. Let me go grab that real quick. This is an ATC belay device. So basically how this functions is there are two loops down here. You put the rope through one of the loops and then through this locking carabiner and then clip the rope through the carabiner and this loop as well, and it goes back out the same loop. So what this does is it creates a lock when um, the rope is read through. So the climber falls, you lock it down with your hand, and then it stops the fall. Uh, in this test, we're going to show what happens if the climber's weight is not stopped by the belayer and uh, the rope continues to feed through until, you know, we don't, we don't know what happens. That's why we're testing it, right? So. Right here, let's see, it looks like Vinny is nearly done. We're gonna rig up our enforcer once again, um, and we're gonna test the load forces on this fall. Let's see, how we doing, Vinny? There's an ATC, we're gonna bring it to the top, bring the weight to the top, rig the weight, and then three. Oh boy. We're very excited for this. Thank you guys again for tuning in uh, to our inaugural Rock Science event. Um, many more to come. We have a lot of experiments to do on the climbing wall and outside. Um, this is just scratching the surface of uh, the experiments we are able to do and, um, and even breaking into territory that hasn't really been explored quite as much. All of these demonstrations have been done before. Um, a lot of them are part of uh, load testing and um, uh, the manufacturers do these kind of tests to ensure that their systems uh, function correctly. Um, but uh, there are a couple more tests that we can do that we are going to do at later dates that uh, explore um, some more applied ideas of how uh, things can go wrong while climbing. Um, a big part of climbing is risk mitigation. And um, the number one cause of accidents um, in rock climbing is not having a secondary backup system. Uh, you know, a lot of that can be not tying knots in the end of the rope and then you go to rappel and then it comes right out of your rope. Um, it can be mistying something and then it fails and then you don't have another stop. So you fall. Um, it can, it has a million different iterations of how it can happen. But the number one thing that we teach in our program and that most programs teach is redundancy. Um, how to create a system that uh, will catch you even if you don't, if, if, even if you rig something incorrectly and if you, if you do it incorrectly, there was still a backup to catch you. In these scenarios, we do not have a backup in the system. So 
it can show you how catastrophic it can be um, if someone takes a fall and you have an uncontrolled delay, for example, which is what we're rigging right now. You see the ropes coming up, and that's our three to one mechanical advantage right there. Um, Brittany's obviously hauling that rope up there, and uh, it's significantly easier for him than uh, regularly hauling up a 45 pound rope would be. Um, also, now uh, it stops there because of our prusik, um, and that's going to hang out right there until we decide to do something with it. Uh, that's a very cool system. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it took a very long time to figure out, uh, but we have it now and it's very awesome. And uh, I'm sure we'll have a video explaining that at a later date because that's just, it's such a cool system that it's worth its own um, thing. So here we are now uh, rigging up our uh, belay device. We're rigging up our weight and we're nearing our second drop. So we just have to send Vinny up the wall one more time uh to to undo that rig and then we will be ready for our second drop all right here he goes now just climbing up the wall what a total monkey just he's just so good <laughs> all right sweet so while he's doing that um if you guys are interested at all in learning more about climbing, getting more into this sport, um, I would totally recommend first coming to our clinics. Um, they're extremely uh, cheap, some, uh, most of the time free. If you just stop in, we can teach you whatever you want, really, um, within our <laughs> knowledge span. Uh, and uh, there's just a ton of opportunities to get involved, both in gym climbing and outdoor climbing. Um, and it's, it's such a great sport that I'm very passionate about and we all are here at op that it's just we would love to get anyone into it at any time so feel free to stop by the shop um that's in p002 um and we can help you out with really any question you have uh any gear issues any um any ideas you want to have if you want to test some of this stuff out i mean we're here um and we are happy to have you and here we go Vinny's taking his system down now and we are about ready for our second drop All right, so let's go ahead and snag this stuff out of the way. Yes, I, I have. If you want to put something else, um, you want to say anything else, now's your time. That's right. So the ATC drop is what we're doing right now. Um, the ATC is a classic piece of climbing gear that's been used forever. Um, that it's tube belay devices this is the classification of belay devices. Um, but nowadays, um, most people default to their Grigri. This right here is uh, a Grigri. It's actually a Grigri Plus, but uh, this is the standard that you see in most climbing gyms now, um, as well as a lot of outdoor climbers. The ATC, ATC still has a lot of merit, um, both as a double strand repel device and um, to be used as an auto block system, we can explain that. Um, if you're interested at a later time, that's sort of out of our scope of operations. Um, but here we go. I think we're about ready for our second draft. I'm gonna hand the floor to Vinny, so and he can explain uh, how we're gonna measure this. He's reconnecting right now, I'll give him a second. Uh, climb up the wall that much. Let's have scared him a little bit. Right? <laughs> Yeah. All right. So even in this system, um, we're not when we're doing an uncontrolled drop, we still have safety measures in place. None of our weight here crossing our fingers is going to hit the ground. Um, we have our blocker knots in place for this. So even in an uncontrolled fall, um, the weight's going to stop before it hits the ground. Um, we uh, always have a backup system in place, both in our tests and our climbs and most everything we do outside with rope related skills. Obviously I've said this before, but it's so imperative to have multiple systems, multiple backup systems um, in order to stay safe because um, this sport has a lot of potential of risk, um, but it can be mitigated uh, very easily if you know the proper techniques and you have the proper training um, to be able to do this. All right, so 
Vinny right now is tying a secondary block or not to give um, this rope a little bit more stretch. And we are nearly ready for a second drop. All right, let's see if uh, Vinny can connect to the internet here. And Ken's, if you could step to one side or the other, it would be excellent. All righty. All right, everyone, this is me. So, um, yeah, right here in this experiment, we're about to do what's called an uncontrolled belay. So typically, you'd have a person right here managing this rope. We're going to show you what happens in a typical top rope scenario when you don't have anyone managing that rope. All right, go ahead and let it rip. And oh, nothing. and it caught itself. <laughs> what? A oh, there we go. Look at that. So these devices are uh, pretty safe. As soon as you exceed 60 or 70 pounds on one of these devices, it'll drop really aggressively. It'll be enough to overcome this weight coming through. And when it's enough to overcome the rope coming through, it just shoots it through the device. It doesn't stop it at all. So in this one, you saw that we had to actually pick up the rope to make it uh, actually go through the device. And that's good. That's a safety feature. That's there because this device creates a bunch of extra friction in the system and does not hey, let it fall. We're having some Teams problems with the recording. I don't know what happened. Hang on one second. We got some technical technical difficulties going on. I think we should do it with a little bit more weight. All right, we're gonna give you guys a treat and show you what happens when we put a little more weight on there, because. We want that thing to go flying through the device and then catch just before it hits the ground. So we're gonna re-rig this system to do just that and then we will be right back with you. All right. This is a bit fucked. Hang on, we got it. I'm just gonna not crush my hand. On. All right. Apologies for the technical delay. I know um, you really missed my beautiful face here, so uh, so sorry for that. Uh, we'll be right back. Um, because that um, weight was n not substantial enough to uh, cause an uncontrolled fall. That's only. 45 pounds after all, not your weight of an average climber. Um, we are going to double the weight and see how that impacts the uh, effect of the fall. So Vinny right now is going to haul this up, again using his three to one system. He's hauling 90 pounds right there. And look how easy that is. That's the impact of our uh, system and any mechanical advantage system at all. They're so cool, I would definitely, uh, advise you to give that a Google search or YouTube rabbit hole there. I, I mean, I've spent way too much time on this stuff, um, <laughs> but it's just, they're, they're very cool. Um, very cool systems. They have a ton of applications for all sorts of things, um, not just climbing um, in all sort of rope related things. If you wanted to haul anything, mechanical advantage is the way to go. All right. So now we have our um, drop repositioned. Um, we're going to send Vinny up again, poor guy up the climbing wall. Um, and he's going to re-rig that real quick. All right. So again, for um, those of you who's just joined us, welcome in. Um, we, uh, this is Rockwall Science with Outdoor Pursuits, and uh, we are going to be doing a ton of drops with a ton of different scenarios, uh, both with weight and me. <laughs> so... We'll see how that goes. Um, demonstrating the effects of uh, objects falling in motion and uh, how our, our modern climbing systems can prevent some of these falls. 
Here goes Vinny once again. <laughs> climbing in the, uh, those, those are some new age climbing shoes there. Really, uh, <laughs> that's the newest, uh, newest form of, of rock shoe there. All right, so Vinny's right now is releasing the Prusik on our three to one mechanical advantage system, allowing him to uh, operate with that rope. I'm gonna actually step over real quick and uh, disengage that system. Um, or no, I'm not gonna do that actually, because he's gonna clip it to himself. I don't even know what's going on. I'm hosting this thing. <laughs> and here he comes, lowering down on his Prusik. Boom, there we go. And now our second, technically second drop, is uh, ready once more. <laughs> Let's see what the difference, uh, what difference uh, another 45 pounds makes to this weight. We're also going to measure this along with, um, we're going to measure this with a stopwatch. Um, and Vinny can t talk a little bit more about how um, you can determine an object's, uh, an object's weight by its velocity. So um, we're just going to clear some ropes out of here and then we'll be ready once more for our drop. All right, obviously you can see Vinny trying to yard on the 90 pounds. 90 pounds is a lot more when you don't have three to one mechanical advantage here. All right, our system is on belay. If we could clear the area. All right, everyone, are you ready? And Cruz, are you ready with the stopwatch? In three, two, one, go. Whoa, that let it down. Sweet. That would have been a not so pleasant fall. No, thank if you. If that was a person. And even though um, that 90 pounds came hauling down the wall, it looks like our Blair only saw a maximum of 50 pounds. So that is something to be said about the inefficiencies in the rope. Um, I don't know if you can see from that camera back there, there's a little bit of a twist. There's a little bit of a twist. In our anchor at the uh, way up there. And that adds an additional bit of friction. And so as a result, um, that 90-pound drop turns into 50 pounds on the belayer side. And it comes down the wall in about 1.9 seconds. So a little bit of physics for you guys. Um, the force on an object in free fall is its mass times... It's acceleration due to gravity, and that's usually known as its weight. So typically an object who's experiencing its own force in weight will fall at 9.8 meters per second squared. That's our gravitational the, constant. Um, However, um, when we have friction thing. due to a top rope anchor and a belay device, like the rope was running through here, then that that's friction fine. subtracts. Also, from yeah, its we weight, and well, so no, no, no. we, we can the calculate the, the then, um, acceleration of the object based on how long it took to fall a certain distance from rest, which we know here was 20 feet in 1.9 seconds. So when you have an object falling 20 feet in 1.9 seconds, it's going to give you an acceleration, okay. and cool. we know what its acceleration yeah, should be. So up. using and its acceleration you... times its mass oh, um, the minus that. the <laughs> weight of the object, that gives us the force that was opposing that fall. So in a previous experiment, um, we've gotten about uh, 30 pounds of force from the belay device alone with no twists in the rope. And when there's no twist in the rope up there and that 90 pounds is falling, there's a really violent uh, whip, how it throws the rope around down there at the bottom. So you wouldn't want to be that belayer um, just letting your climber free fall. And you definitely wouldn't want to do that because that's not very nice to your climber either. So <laughs> right now we're going to go ahead and re-rig this system with a modern device called a Grigri, 
the Grigri is way more widely used in sport climbing these days because it is what's called an assisted braking device. So even uh, even without someone managing it, it will. Uh, this is what the Grigri is. It's got a little bit of a cam system in here, so you can imagine a rope comes through this and up there, and then as the rope pulls up on this thing, it sandwiches it in this cavity right here. So that's how that device works, and it's a little different than the other one because the other one is just a slit for the rope to turn around in. And so this one is a lot more mechanically advanced, and I um, haven't done this experiment yet, this is a first of a kind for you guys. My hypothesis is that the Grigri catches the weight and doesn't let it fall at all. So we shall see. All right, so we're just hanging out here, up on the wall. Is that Grigory's catching there? Um, I'm gonna raise this up a little bit more, actually. Oh, see how high we can get this thing. All right, if you can take that on the Grigory there. Okay, and then that's on belay on the Grigory. All right, and then lower. So again, this is a different type of belay device that you'd use to catch a climber that was falling off the wall, just like this weight is. It's rigged in exactly the same here. way as before. Just clip it to the belay. The one that let that weight fall down the wall, which again is not what you want to do to your climber. You do not want to let your climber fall down the wall. So this is a newer device um, that has taken off in the sport climbing industry. And again, it's called the Grigri. Um, it's developed by a company named Petzl, who's a French company, and they make ropes, devices, and all sorts of rope access and sport stuff. So, yeah, come on by. All right, so we're ready to do the drop. My hypothesis is that it does not move at all, but let's see. All right, three, two, one, and let it go. And look at that. It stopped it completely now uh let's pull the release lever back all the way and see what that does so be ready to time it again and be ready for that blocker not to fly into there kenzie so watch your hand here actually uh before we do that let's raise that with a rope will you just tie that on the brake lever will that do it oh yeah i think so All right, so there's certainly a danger in expecting a Grigri to be an auto-locking device. Um, when the Grigri first came out, that's what a lot of people assumed it was, and uh, people started to think, oh, you know, I don't have to have a hand on my brake strand because um, the Grigri will just catch everything, right? Um, that is a fallacy. The Grigri can still fail 
there are still um, numerous examples of people um, taking falls on Grigory's uh, because the auto locking system did not engage. Um, this is not a substitute for a brake hand. And you can see, even uh, with a Grigory, it can still fail. Um, you can still take a pretty gnarly fall. So, all right, three, two. Oh, okay. oh tragic. I need to Missed. pull it kind of downwards. All right, and all right. So all right. the rope's not working, unfortunately. <laughs> so we're just going to uh, let do that it by go. hand. Three, two, one, drop. Woo! There we go. Look at Yikes. that. Look at so, that. So that saw a lot more force than before, and it came through even faster than the unmanaged ATC device. Woo. So how long was that fall? 0.76 seconds. Six seconds. So that was going more than double the speed of the unmanaged ATC. And mm -hmm. uh, that is a lesson on why it's really important to not pull the release handle all the way back on the Grigory to lower your climber. Um, newer Grigories, like the Grigory Plus, well, one of which I own, is a device that has a panic stop, which is a feature that is designed to directly combat that. So the panic stop, when you pull all the way back on that lever that released that rope just then, um, will actually grab and it'll stop the rope from coming through. So if it feels like you're lowering your belayer and you panic and pull the lever back all the way, it will detect that and it will stop you from doing that. Okay, we're actually observing something really very interesting right now. Um, I am going to... So currently, with what we're experiencing right now with the Grigory, is if I let go of the brake string, it's actually slowly feeding through the Grigory. So even now, as the weight is mostly resting on the ground, the auto locking feature is not completely working. So for the auto locking feature to engage, it almost requires it to be shock loaded in an instant. But if you were to just slowly load the rope on, um, it will actually still kind of slide through. Whoa. That's crazy. So that's the thing about the Grigory is you cannot expect it to always lock without your hand on the brake strand. But with a hand on the brake strand, you can expect it to always lock. So please, whenever you're playing somebody with a Grigory or similar device, Keep a hand on that brake strand. What should we test next? A descender? Do we have I think so. Do we have one? I think we might not have one. I think we can just move on. All right. So, all right. We so, we're going to go ahead and do our human drop test. That's where um, we're dropping everything, including me and Ian. So, uh, what we're going to do now is demonstrate the forces and read out the forces for you on this scale of an actual human climbing scenario. So first we're going to go up with uh, a top rope anchor like the one we've been using so far. We're going to measure the forces on both the climber and the belayer side of the rope because I'm telling you now they will be different and we're going to do one test after that right where we do a lead climbing uh, scenario. So um, those are two different types of climbing, and I'll go ahead and explain the difference real quick. Top roping is what we've been doing uh, for these weights right here, and that's where the anchor is way above where the climber is, and you're climbing from the bottom to the anchor, and then you get lowered back down. In a lead climb, Sorry. you're actually climbing with a rope starting below you. And as you get to where you need to be on the wall, where there's bolts so you can anchor in, you'll set your own protection. So you'll um, yeah. clip the rope into anchors that are progressively up further on the wall. As you do this, there's the potential to fall while you're above your yeah, anchor. And when you um, fall above your anchor, people. you fall. Because I'm waiting most of my fingers right here are the anchor. Uh, yeah, I'm a lead. Uh, on this one, we're just. Kind of climber is my phone. So if this is my okay. climber and this is the anchor. Distance to my anchor, and then however far I was above that, past that. 
because I have all that extra slack in my rope. And that fall and then sudden catch on the rope in a lead climb generates a lot larger force than you'd see in a typical top roping setting. So we'll demonstrate that for you and even quantify it. We have two of these scales that we're going to be using today. And one of them is going to be on Ian. One of them is going to be on me. And we'll be doing a little bit of falling for you guys. So if you'll give us just a couple minutes to rig this up, um, we will demonstrate some forces. I'll be the dummy. This is our, this is our rig, right? All right, to make this repeatable, we will be climbing um, up to the same point each time. That point is going to be one of those big yellow holes on the wall up there. So I'll point them out for the camera right there. Uh, yeah, I'm not taking a loop all of them. They are right here. So he's going to be climbing up to there, and then he's going to be taking a fall from there first on top rope with Kenzie as his belay. So, um, one thing to say right now is that we can expect if there's a force pulling up on Kenzie that is more than her weight, it will actually send her into the air. So, um, that's something that we're definitely expecting with the lead setting, but not so much in the top rope. In the top rope, she may or may not go flying up in the air. Uh, stay tuned to find out. And now that we're not uh, looking at the entire wall, I'm actually going to scoot you guys a little bit closer to the action so you can see what's going on a little better. All right, here we are. All right, guys. Ian and Kenzie rigged up to the rope. Ian is going to start climbing. That's uh, right. Before I start climbing, um, even in a test like this, uh, we always want to make sure that we're doing our harness-to-harness -harness check to make sure that we're being safe on the wall. Um, what that is is that I'm going to check myself and my belay partner to ensure that we're both rigged completely correctly. So first, I'm going to check myself that I'm in my belay loop. I'm on my carabiners. All my carabiners are locked, and then my knot is tied correctly. Then I'm going to go over to my belay, ensure that her Grigory is reeved correctly. That's pulling down on this um, and uh, making sure that 
the diagram on it is uh, correctly facing, uh, making sure that her carabiners are locked as well and that her harness is secured correctly. Uh, after I've done this and I do this uh, I, at the start of every single climb, then we're ready to go. Um, on belay. Alrighty, and now I'm climbing. If you are ever curious about how to tie the knots correctly, how to belay correctly, and how to make systems of ropes for your climbers like this, please do stop by Outdoor Pursuits in the PE Event Center. Um, we're in PE 002, and we will happily teach that uh, teach that stuff to you any time we are open, which is 10 to 2 every weekday during school. And we're working on our summer hours right now. Uh, stay tuned for what our summer hours are going to be. All right. And now that I'm up on the wall, now it's time for me to drop everything. All right. Look at that. He dropped. So, Ian, go ahead and read what was the force on your scale. I'm reading 300 pounds. 300 pounds was the maximum force on his scale. 140. 140. So that is near. That is more than half a reduction in force because of how that rope goes up and through that carabiner. That is all that friction. That is 160 pounds of force. Now, are we going to do lead? We're going to do lead. Now, we're going to take a lead fall. So, Ian will climb up to the same height as before and fall from a anchor that is yeah, I'm gonna take a below fall. him. When he falls from the anchor that's below him, the distance that he falls is going to be more than twice the distance that he is above the anchor before he gets caught. So you can go ahead and reset the maximums. All right, perfect. All right, now we're going to go just ahead like before, and uh, we need rig to our lead out. climbing bullet. You can just pull this out. Or let me just get the knot out so it doesn't rest the anchor. Oh. Let it be known that taking knots out is not easy after you've fallen on them. A loaded knot can be really difficult to untie because as you fall on it and load it, the strands squeeze together really tightly. And so that was a really nice catch, Kenzie. <laughs> uh, and so uh, don't always expect to be able to undo a knot. Uh, once it's been loaded heavily. Sometimes a knot loaded really heavily will actually change orientations and flip. Uh, and that's when a knot has officially failed is when it flips from the orientation you tied it in. Oh my God. Did you I see that? You guys see that? I'm insane. I'm such a good knot tire. <laughs> I actually want to redo that because too long, but oh my goodness. If, I get if you guys are interested in learning how to do this lead climbing, we offer a lead climbing clinic, one in the spring and one in the fall, taught by Ian and Kenzie here. So please do sign up for those when you get the chance. Again, if you want to sign up for any of our outings, you can come visit us in PE002. Um, from 10 to 2 on the weekdays. Mm -hmm. I'll just show somebody that. So now, as Ian gets ready to climb up the wall, he's bringing his pieces of protection with him. So he's got what's called quick draws on his harness now. He's going to clip those quick draws to the pre-rig bolts in the wall which are bolted into the metal superstructure behind the wall as opposed to the wooden panels. Uh, that metal superstructure is a lot stronger and is rated to take these big uh, lead falls like he's going to take right now. All right, cool. All right, I think we're ready to go. All right, you're ready to go. I would do the second clip or the third. Uh, no, we're going to do the fourth, fourth clip. Fourth of anchors? Okay. All right, and then real quick, I'm going to check my system once again. Um, that I'm through, I'm clipped, my knot is correct, uh, my belayer's knot is correct, she's in. Our harnesses have not left the same position. We are ready to go. All right. And also these are zeroed. Okay, climbing. 
Yeah, it can't be emphasized enough. Always check your equipment before you start climbing. If you're interested in learning how to climb, please do find us. We're interested in teaching you. And if you're just here for the extra credit in physics class, thanks for coming. Uh, I'll definitely let your professor know that you were here. Ian's radio silence while he's up there on the wall doing that intense uh, lead climbing. But it looks like he's made it all the way to the top. He's protected to his very last piece of protection. Uh -oh. He is getting above it. He's getting really pumped. He's about to fall. And wow, look at that. He went flying up into the air. <laughs> so, I think that might be slightly more forces. Yeah, so before. let's see. What I'm have you got? 500 pounds. 500 pounds of force. And that enforcer scale is going crazy right now. It's going insane. And what do you got, Ken? I've got 240. 240. 240. So even in the lead ball, it's still about a half reduction like of force wild. Uh, yeah. through the belayer. This is what's so cool about modern belay systems. Um, let's get down here, and then we'll talk to you a little bit more. <laughs> Thank you for the catch. Was that fun, guys? Oh, oh my heart went in my throat. <laughs> Look how fucked this knot is. <laughs> <laughs> His heart is racing, guys. That was a long way down. Oh, he fell probably ball. 10 or 12 feet, uh, which is standard, if not actually a short distance for a lead fall. So please be very careful when you're lead climbing. Don't fall near the ground. Yes, and, and that goes without saying. You always climb within your ability. Um, don't do anything that is outside of your ability, especially if you're doing something uh, dangerous like lead climbing. Uh, you should always climb within your ability. You should always be prepared, be aware, and be trained on everything that you need to do to be safe while doing these sports. This has been Rockwall Science with Outdoor Pursuits. We want to thank you guys so much for showing up to our live stream today, hanging through it. Um, if you are interested in anything that you saw today, including student employment, learning how to rock climb, learning how to do mechanical advantage, and learning how to build rope systems. We are Outdoor Pursuits, and we are here to help you guys as students to uh, advance your ability and keep you guys safe in the great outdoors. Looks like we got a chat. Um, be safe yep. out there, says Brian Ferguson. Thank you, Brian. Um, does anyone have any questions for us? We can do a couple minutes of Q&A. Um, Again, if you were here for the extra credit, you got it. Um, we'll report to your professors. Otherwise, thanks so much for coming. We'll stick around for a couple of extra minutes to be answering questions that come in the chat. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Thank that was a lot so of fun. Much. That was a ton of fun. My heart uh, may have stopped, but, you know, uh, we're still going, and I, I think I'm still alive. So uh, absolutely come in any time. We're here to help. We're here to teach. We're so happy um, to get you to learn. So absolutely stop by any time.